So today I'll be talking about the Israel-Palestine conflict, but hopefully the solution for it. Um, quick little bit of background on the whole entire issue, in case you haven't been keeping up, is that Israel's land in the Middle East that was previously owned by Arab nations that was given to the Jewish people after World War II because a lot of bad things happened in World War II to the Jews, as most of you probably know. Um, the Arabs slash the Palestinians are pretty much on the same line for most of this presentation. Um, they felt that the Jews should not have their own land and that um, Israel also kind of like surrounded um, control, like Arab controlled lands such as the Gaza Strip and the West Bank. Um, this is according to Zach Beauchamp from Vox News. Um, and the West Bank is actually on the eastern part of Israel and the Gaza Strip is on the western part uh, right up against the sea. Um, Israel has offered many times for a two-state agreement, which is um, like Israel gets their land, uh, Palestinians get their own land as well, which is kind of in the same area, and they just call it a day. And each time the Palestinians shut it down and say, no, that's not going to happen. Um, we kind of just want you out of here in general. Uh, this was kind of a take from the unpacked um, video on YouTube, from YouTube about this whole entire issue. So there's mainly different views as to how certain people think this should be taken care of. Um, ben Shapiro, um, he believes that Palestinians don't deserve their own state and that there's no historical or any real record of them having um, control or like real religious effects in that land and that they're more or less just a terror gr terrorist group that want to eradicate all the Jews. The Israeli government has been shooting for a two-state agreement, as which I said before, um, for the past you know forty some odd years, but still has not worked out. Palestinians, of course, think Israel shouldn't exist; that's their state. So, uh, Rhonda E. Howard Hosman, uh, she's a professor emeritus of political science at Wilfrid Lauer University, um, thinks that really neither side wants peace to work out. Um, because the Israeli government keeps asking for too much in the negotiations, because um, they ask for a little bit too much control of that whole entire land. Um, and every time that it is relatively peaceful, the Palestinians will go in and, you know, since they don't believe that Israel should be a state, they attack it with, you know, suicide bombers, they attack it with, you know, just straight, you know, force like the army. Um, and I really think the issue um, is brought up very well in John Green's crash course. Um, is that the issues kind of like nationalism and Zionism is the fact that um, both of these groups kind of want their own state and want a place to call them their own. Um, and this is kind of like Britain's fault because in World War II, they promised the Jews that they'd have their own state and they promised the Arabs that they'd kind of have their own state in the same exact land. Um, and then after World War II, the British had control over the area, but they kind of segregated everyone they're like Jews over here, Arabs over here, Christians over here. And because of that, they never really able to like meld and work together. It was more like we have our own thoughts and we're going to keep our own thoughts because we don't trust you and we don't agree with your thinking. So uh, my take on all of this, I actually have three takes. And um, the third one's my, you know, the one I think is the best, but it's just different options. So my first take is that there should be an unbiased third party to regulate everything. Um, definitely can't be the US because US has very strong ties uh, with Israel, but someone to kind of say, you're both acting like children, you want too much, you want too much, we have to come together and work it out. You know, it's like fighting over a toy. You know, it's my toy, no, it's my toy. Slap them both saying no, you're both gonna share the toy, we're all gonna be working together, have a nice time. Second option, which is actually more, this is Ben Shapiro's take, is that Israel should just take over all the land um, and pretty much say, no, this is ours. It was given to us. You guys keep trying to destroy us. This is unfair. But my take on his take is that we also give Palestinians rights within Israel because um, they also have no place to go currently. Um, the other Arab lands kind of don't want them because they kind of, again, according to Ben Shapiro, they see them more of a, t a terrorist group. But as long as we, I think as long as Israel gives them rights within that state and say, no, you can be citizens, even though this is a Jewish state, 
we want you to still have a place to live, a place to stay, a place to practice your beliefs, because they do have certain things within that area that does go with their religion. Even though this is more of a land conflict, it's still saying, hey, we're trying to compromise with you a little bit. The final option, which makes the most sense, and is kind of the one that the Israeli government has been pushing for a long time, and the UN actually pushed for this too, uh, I believe in the 60s, is that the Palestinians should just take the land that's being offered to them because here's the thing. I understand that they don't want you know, the Jews to have their own land. I get that to some extent, not really. But it's the fact that every time the Palestinians go in and attack the Israelis, the Israelis push back with their army um, and their military. And um, in Israel, I think men have to serve four years in the military, uh, females have to serve two years once they turn 18. And the Jews, again, had this Zionistic, which is you know, nationalistic uh, view of this is our land, we want to come together as a nation and you know have this spot that we can call our own. So they've pretty much done everything to protect that. And people have been saying for the past couple of years that the Israeli government has been going too far and really trying to almost eradicate the Palestinians which they have done some very bad things. I don't, I can't think of them off the top of my head currently, but they they have committed some wrongdoing just human rights wise, you know. Uh, they've been throwing Palestinians in jail, kind of keeping them in their own little like camps almost, but not, you know, camp camps. Um, but every time the Palestinians attack, the Israelis push back so much more with their army that's so much well, you know, organized, coordinated that there's no chance for the Palestinians to come in and take out Israel and take over this land. It just simply won't happen militarily. So if we want to keep peace and they want their own land, they have to just take what Israel is giving to them because there's just going to be more death on both sides, but more or less the Palestinian side because the Israeli military is so strong and is also, again, partially backed by the United States and we have the strongest military. So there's really, the best way to kind of solve this compromise is for the Palestinians to say, you know what, we've lost, we're not, we don't have the opportunity to really win this and get everything that we want. And Israel is giving up with certain things. So they are coming to a compromise together. And though it might not be ideal for both parties, it is a compromise where we can find peace and we can find hope for the future because this has gone on for so long and it's just coming to a point now where I think there's no there's no way we can continue fighting and there's no way that you know this fighting can keep going and it actually end up working out.